Now, after doing this, what uh, Ferdinand de Saussure says, he says that language is thus a structured kind of a thing and it's a complete whole, a unified whole. Because if it's a complete and unified whole, only in that scenario can we make it a simple thing from that complexity. We can take it away from that complexity. So he has structured this language and, you know, told us that it's all about linguistic structures. And then he says that in any process of communication, language goes through three forms or through three phases. And those three phases are, he would tell you, psychological, physiological, and physical. These are the three processes through which uh, language goes or communication goes and completes. And here he tells you that in order to make sense of this language or to make sense of the communication, we need minimum two persons. You know, if there is only one person, most probably the language would be incomplete now. So to make it complete, we need at least, you know, minimum two persons. And say, for example, those two persons are A and B. Now, how this functions? He says, it begins from psychological perspective. Say, for example, A has a thought in his mind. That is psychological part of the language. An idea has struck his mind. Now, as an idea strikes his mind, what he does, he utters. As he utters this word, he uses vocal cords. As he uses vocal cords, he makes language physiological because now an organ is being used. And once he has uttered this word or a particular sentence, it gets converted into sound waves. As it gets converted into sound waves, it becomes physical. Now you understand the three phases of language. It starts from psychological, within the brain, moves to physiological, use of vocal cords and ear, the hearing capabilities and the speaking capabilities, and eventually turns into sound waves, which become physical, and then they strike person B, and the first thing that happens with person B is physiological, because his ears come into use, he hears those things, and then they turn psychological. They have an impact upon him and a thought strikes in his head. As that thought strikes in his head, he wishes to retaliate, speak back. So again, it becomes physiological. Now he uses vocal cords. As he utters them, they become sound waves and they become physical in nature. That is the cycle that Ferdinand de Saussure would tell you in this particular essay and old chapters. Now after doing this he says that language is uh, you know uh, a language consists of signs is a structure of signs and he has said this at, at various places and to understand this model of science you can refer to our lecture and we have given the link at the top of this video you can click on this link and you know uh, this will, you would be redirected to that particular video and you will uh, understand more details about you know, the function of signs or how signs work in the language. So he says that it's all about signs. Language consists of signs. And these signs function in a proper structure through signifiers and signifieds. What is sign? What is signifier? What is signified? Again, refer to the lecture. Again, you know, this link would pop up at the top of this video. You can click it and know about all those things. I will not touch them here in this lecture because then this lecture will become, you know, long. Now, he talks about one more thing about it. Now, since, you know, he reduces language to literary uh, linguistic structures and then linguistic structures he would reduce to signs. And now he says that if language consists of signs and these signs have social unity, there must be a science which studies signs. So he coins semiology. He says we need a science called semiology. What would be the function of semiology? The function of semiology would be to understand the nature and function of signs in our society. How do the signs work? And he says that, you know, initially there is no such thing as semiology. It would be very difficult for the people to accept this, uh, this science. But eventually he says uh, that if it is not there, but it is needed. 
So there is another object of study now for the linguistics and that is semiology. So you know they can uh, study now linguistic structures and they can study now semiology. Through linguistic structures they would study the pattern of the language and through semiology they would understand the structure of signs. They would understand the nature of signs and the function of signs. And it is here that he concludes his essay, The Object of Study. Because he has told you what is now the object of study in linguistics. And it is structure, ling st linguistic structures and symbology. So he has taken you out of that initial uh, complexity, out of that initial confusions that he created at the beginning of the essay. And now has made this language seem to be very simple and how simple it is again this link pops up at the top of the video refer to this lecture and understand it more in detail now this lecture was recorded on demand one of the users uh, demanded uh, that this lecture be recorded so we recorded this lecture and i hope that this lecture was helpful for you and you were able to understand the object of study by Ferdinand de Saussure. That is all we have in today's lecture. Don't forget to share, like, comment and subscribe on uh, you know, your academy. Sharing is caring and liking is the best thing that you can do to us. And you know, leaving a comment would be generous of you. Thank you for watching and don't forget uh, to browse other videos on your academy. Keep watching your academy for interesting stuff on this website. Thank you.